Thanks for tuning in. This video will showcase our recent preprint showing the ability of floral volatiles to reduce infection with trypanosomatid parasites in honeybees. Honeybees pollinate a variety of crops and produce tasty edible products as well. However, bees' lives are not all sweetness and light. They face infection with parasites as large as mites and as small as viruses that have been linked to colony collapse. Two parasites that have received relatively little attention are the trypanosomatids, Prothidium mellifici, found in ailing honeybee colonies in Australia in the 1960s, and the more recently described Lotmaria possum, which has emerged as the dominant honeybee trypanosomatid worldwide since its discovery right here at the Bee Research Lab by Ryan Schwartz and Jay Evans. Trypanosomatids, primarily Lotmaria possum, have been found in over 80% of colonies in some national surveys. In fact, the name possum, meaning everywhere, was chosen to reflect this cosmopolitan distribution. Infections have also been associated with colony collapse on three different continents and shown to shorten bee lifespan in some controlled experiments. Related parasites in bumblebees have a range of chronic effects, including slowed colony growth, impaired foraging efficiency, and reduced overwinter survival. As a result, these trypanosomatids are of some concern in managed honeybees. However, no treatments for infection are currently available. The trypanosomatids that infect honeybees are close relatives of the species found in bumblebees and in the same family as the insect vectored Leishmania parasites of humans, which are threats to public health in many tropical and subtropical regions. Plants have long been a source of therapeutic treatments for Leishmania and nectar and pollen sources and their chemical components can reduce trypanosomatid infection in bumblebees as well. Might plant-derived antimicrobial compounds be effective against trypanosomatid parasites in honeybees as well? We recently used parasite cell cultures to screen a selection of anti leishmanial compounds against our bee parasites. These trials identified 12 compounds that affected growth of Prothidium mellifici and Lotmaria possum, as well as a related parasite, Prothidia fasciculata, found in mosquitoes. We tested the effects of four of these inhibitory compounds that are also floral volatiles, expecting that these might be relatively well tolerated by flower visiting bees. These compounds were the terpenoids, carvacrol and its isomer, thymol, found in thyme and oregano plants, and the phenylpropanoids, eugenol and cinnamaldehyde, both of which are common in floral fragrances. You may also recognize thymol as an ingredient in antiseptic mouthwash, eugenol as the spicy essence of clove oil, and cinnamaldehyde as a major component of cinnamon. We fed these compounds each at two concentrations to bees inoculated with Lotmaria to evaluate the compound's effects on parasitic infection and survival of bees. We used dietary concentrations corresponding to at least twofold and tenfold the inhibitory concentrations for cell cultures. Although these are substantially higher than concentrations found so far in nectar, pollen, and honey, we wanted to ensure that sufficient concentrations of the ingested compounds, all of which disappear rapidly from the gastrointestinal tract, would reach the hindgut where Lotmaria establishes. Here are the results. Three of the four compounds, carvacrol, eugenol, and cinnamaldehyde, significantly and substantially reduced infection. Here's infection intensity shown on the y-axis. 
Note the log scale. In each case, the high concentration treatment corresponding to roughly tenfold the concentration needed to inhibit growth of parasite cell cultures reduced infection intensity by over 90% and by over 99% in the case of eugenol. However, despite their reduced infection, bees fed carbacrol and eugenol died significantly faster than bees fed diets without added phytochemicals, more than twice as fast for the eugenol containing diets and nearly six times as fast for high concentration carvacrol. However, the difference in survival for bees fed cinnamaldehyde was not statistically significant. It is worth noting that among bees fed control diets, inoculation with parasites did not appear to affect survivorship, indicating that at least under the conditions here, the antiparasitic phytochemicals may be more harmful to bees than the infection itself. It's possible that intermediate chemical concentrations would be better tolerated by bees, but still have strong effects on parasites. Summarizing our results, to our knowledge, this was the first controlled test of phytochemicals for treatment of trypanosomatid infection in honeybees. We found that three of the four compounds tested, carvacrol, eugenol, and cinnamaldehyde, reduced infection intensity by over 90%, highlighting the utility of the cell culture system for identification of inhibitory compounds. However, two of these compounds also increase bee mortality, underlining the importance of follow-up testing to identify possible off-target effects on hosts. These experiments provide the first guidance in design of phytochemical-based treatments and plant communities to ameliorate infection with emerging Lotmaria parasites in managed and wild bees. A grateful thank you to my colleagues and sponsors who have supported, enabled, and improved this work. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to check out our preprint, send an email, or leave a comment.